Hi everyone, no major news today, so let's get straight into the data. Do me a quick favor and like and subscribe and watch the video till the end to help out the channel, and let's get started. So looking at fear and greed, we actually stepped up to a 54 from a 52, despite the fact that markets were actually down a little bit here today. And you can see that here, 54, and a week ago we were at 46. And then looking at that momentum, you can see a slight step down. This is looking like it's going to be a double top. This is looking like a lower high to me. We've been talking about it for a couple of weeks now, and we definitely touched on it a lot this weekend. Strength did hover, slightly bullish there, but still in fear. And then breadth continues to show a lot of strength, which is interesting. We talked about how tech is basically the only sector that is struggling quite a lot right now. Everything else seems to be doing okay, so I guess that makes sense why breadth is doing all right. Put call ratio seems to have bottomed a little bit here in the short term. And remember, this is a contrarian metric, so as it bottoms and starts to rally, that's when equities are going to show a little bit of weakness. Volatility did tick higher just slightly here today as well. And then safe haven demand, jumping all the way into greed. Maybe that bond trade is cooling here just a little bit, but looking at junk bond demand, you can see still extreme fear there. Moving over to seasonality here, for the 26th, we were expecting a basically flat day. And you can see on those election years, it's actually slightly negative into today, which is what we got. So based on election years, we should see slight rally tomorrow, maybe even into Wednesday. So we'll see if that comes true. But remember, the Dow and the S&Ps are generally flat. It's really only the Russell and the NASDAQ that looks bullish based on this indicator. And that's kind of the opposite of what we're seeing right now. The Dow seems to be quite bullish, and the NASDAQ seems to be quite bearish. Moving over to the economic calendar, we got durable goods orders coming in massive, 9.9%, a massive beat, more than doubling expectations. You rarely see that. Previous number was revised down just slightly, but nothing crazy. That is a huge metric, honestly, very surprising. And then looking at tomorrow, we do have consumer confidence coming out at 10 o'clock. Two-year note auction, fairly interesting. And then for Wednesday, five-year note auction, crude inventories, that'll pretty much wrap it up for the next couple days. Moving over to Max Payne for the end of the week, you can see Max Payne is 544 current stock price 560 so a lot of room to the downside got a call wall there at 557 i would expect to get at least below that which is about three quarters of a percent lower from current price total options 1.8 million quite a lot for an off week put call ratio still very high there at 1.2 but those really don't start to kick in until 550 545 and then really at 540 that's when you see quite a bit of puts coming into the market so don't expect to get anywhere near that this week i would expect to hold up somewhere between 545 and 550, which either way gives you about 10 to $15 of potential downside from current price. Moving over to the S&Ps here, you can see we did come off of this trend line once again. We've been watching this very closely. Powerful rally right to this level. Got the gap fill and now we're pulling back. In terms of a day, it wasn't terrible. 0.32, we're still above all the EMAs and SMAs. But look at this momentum. Three days of moving down to the bear side. RSI still hovering above the SMA. So if it's going to bounce, it's probably going to do it there. So right now, short term bearish. Next couple of days at least into that SMA. And then we'll see what happens after that based on this current position. And then looking at that a little bit closer here, you can see the rally up on the Friday session. And then we can see we topped out pre-market, started to sell here today. A little bit of choppy action there at 560.07, which is the level. We actually did eclipse that high back from Thursday, which was interesting in that pre-market move. And then we gave it all back, still hovering at a potential support zone there. Looks okay, but obviously that trend is still major resistance. So we'll see what happens if this zone breaks your next support is going to be that 555.84 area and then I have a level there just below the 144 at 554.87 and then looking at that daily chart you have the 9 EMA sitting just above that next support as well at 556.58 so kind of clustered right in here between 54 and 56 and then looking at the tasty charts just for a moment looking at that four hour chart you can see we're in bearish conditions so if you're in a bearish position right now your atr stop is at 565.45 which is about one percent off of the current move and if this does carry on to the downside usually there's a pretty decent move here you can see last time we got into bullish conditions if you bought that here that would have been 538.40 and that rallied all the way up here to the 560s. So that's about a 22 point move, pretty solid just on that. And now you can see we're in bearish conditions here. So if we get another similar move, probably takes you back down into the 520s, 530s, right in this zone here, which would be a substantial move from here with a pretty tight stop. So 
Overall, still looks like a pretty good trade to the bear side. Moving over to the NASDAQ, we fell right to that trend line again, and then we closed basically right on that level. Momentum still bearish here. RSI, similar to the SPY, looking at that SMA as a zone of support. Still holds that 55 EMA at 19,479. So zone of support, pretty much the lows from Thursday last week, right in that same zone. Nothing crazy, but still continues to look like it's rolling here to the downside. 21 EMA sitting right around that 19,000 area if this trend and that 55 were to break. And looking at the NASDAQ, just for that same thesis here, you can see 55 at 474.17. And you can see after hours, look at that selling coming through. This is the 15 minute chart right at the lows, basically from the session after hours, that selling continues to come through. In terms of support, that's gonna be 471.93. Everything continues to look a little bit bearish here. And then looking at that one hour chart, you can see just how bearish it looks. You got that clear peak, doesn't look nearly as good as the SPY. You got a lower high high and then another lower high right off of that trend continuing to watch that trend and then at this point you really have to assume we're probably going to hit that 471.93 level and then below that you got the 200 so on the hourly chart we're below all the emas 200 sma is your next support and that is all the way down at 469.25 and then below that you got the 21 day ema at 462.35 again momentum rolling to bearish rsi if it's going to hold it needs to do it right there at that 51.40 level and that's about three points lower from current price. Moving over to the Russell and the Dow here, you can see the Russell did try to go higher, broke through that level, touched that highly traded zone, and then gave it all back. Finished just barely positive, 0.03 on the day. Momentum still bullish, RSI still bullish, and we are still above that trend line here. So overall, I would say this is still bullish, but that does give you just a little bit of pause. Touch that level, clear rejection point, highly traded zone, almost to the penny. Needs to hold this trend that is currently sitting around that 220 area, and then below that, you got 218. 79 want to see it break above 221.49 and push to 226. Kind of thought that was what was going to happen this morning, but then it really fell during the session after the gap up. And then moving over here to the Dow, you can see we just continue to grind along that trend line. Let's go to the daily chart here. On the daily chart, it looks like we did get through it a little bit on the Friday session, and then we gapped up and dogeed. Did wick that all-time high going back to the 18th. That high was 413.86, and then the high from today was 414.52. So we did get above it. The trend, your next price target would be up here around 417. Seems like that's in play now that we've broken this on the daily chart. Remember the weekly chart, it really hasn't done it quite yet, but something to watch here. The Dow continues to look pretty good. Moving over to the MAG7 here, you can see we did get a down day. It looks very similar to that NASDAQ chart with the big down move, doji down move candle, momentum still bearish. RSI is right there. You can see these are probably going to touch in the next session and then we'll get a clear decision by market to see if that's going to bounce, get a bounce from there, or if it's just going to cut right through and we're going to head back down to these previous lows. 21 EMA sitting there at 258.55, and then below that you got some trend support around 253.49. Either way, those are some decent down moves, about 2%, and then potentially three and a half, three and three quarters, somewhere in there. So some potential for down move over the next couple of days, and you can see it's actually falling about 50 cents after hours. So something to consider. Big tech continues to look a little bit weak. Moving over to stocks that move today, we got Super Micro and Upstart. Super Micro dumping 8.27%, momentum rolling to bearish, RSI right at the SMA, looking like it's going to touch it tomorrow. And then you can see volume coming through on that selling candle. This is a downtrend. We're below all the EMAs and SMAs. Looks pretty awful, to be honest, on Super Micro. I did add some structure here. So it looks like we're in this true downtrend with a low here, testing this midpoint. Could certainly bounce, maybe hit the upper resistance and then sell some more. But either way, this looks awful. If this zone breaks here, your next support would be that previous low, about 12% lower. And then if that breaks, around 23% lower would be that next support. So super micro looking pretty bad going into tomorrow's session. And then I did get asked about upstart here. This was positive on the day, 2.74. Touched that trend line, rejected from there a little bit. After hours, down just two pennies. My price target was 44.62. I think it could still touch that before we reject, but you can see overbought conditions. Momentum had been fading with just a couple of blips in there. The trend is still very much an 
uptrend. This is clearly grinding price action, ups and downs, but continuing to make higher highs and higher lows. But this could be an interesting point. If it does rip through that, you could see a push maybe up to these previous highs around 49. Those would be your highs back from December of 23. So something to consider. Upstart can make some large moves, just like we saw here. It could decide to rip through that. The high prior to that is back in August of 23, which I have a level there at 6706. So just a couple of things to consider. It is still very much bullish, but based on your technicals, you do have to consider those overbought and fading conditions. Moving over to Apple and Microsoft, you can see Apple was positive on the day, 0.15, but after hours, we have fallen quite a lot. Let's go ahead and look at that on the hourly. I guess it's really more flat here. That last candle was quite bullish, 0.4, and then we gave all of that back to finish down a little bit, 225.77, after closing up at 227.24, so doesn't look super great you can see this clear consolidation can't get above this 227 area continuing to test support go ahead and extend out that trend line here right in there as a potential zone of support based on the day you would expect a little bit more follow through here but that after hours price action is definitely concerning and then looking at microsoft this continues to look awful we talked about the huge down candle thursday barely recovered it all on friday now we're at the level 413.36 in terms and it looks like we've fallen through that after hours 200 sitting there at 409.71 looks like this is probably going to break through there and head towards these previous lows 394.22 would be my next level overall this just looks awful and i do think it's going to break down further towards these previous lows moving over to tesla and nvidia you can see tesla is in this wedge formation here this could be flagging a little bit you got to rally up super wide flag here does look like it's rejecting off resistance here if it follows through on this pattern that would take you all the way down to that 167.34 area and then we'll see what happens after that that's an interesting area so something to watch if it holds a higher low in here maybe that's interesting but right now this looks awful down 3.2 to 3.23 percent and then looking at nvidia again down 2.25 touch that 130.35 level rejected down to 124.69 closed below the midpoint on the candle closed just above that 9 ema looks like consolidation after an up move if it can't get above 130 this is probably breaking down substantially 21 ema would be my price target down there at 115.15 moving over to Am Amazon and Alphabet. Amazon continues to reject off this trend line here, down candle. Tested the level, bounced a little bit, but probably going to sell some more. Momentum bearish RSI, similar to everything else, looking to test that SMA. And then looking at Google, this one, I still really like this as a bearish setup. Clear down move, bear flag, very clean looking. Can't seem to get back up to this upper trend in resistance, and it seems to be consolidating. If this rolls down here, this is going to be a very clean bear flag setup. And I would expect a lot of downside off of this kind of a move. You can see the move in is usually what you price off of, which is around 17%. And if you get a move like that, that would take you all the way down into the 140 to 143 area in here. So something to consider. Certainly looks terrible. Momentum actually looks okay. RSI looks okay. So a little bit of difference between those indicators and the technical pattern. Moving over to Staples and discretionary. Staples continuing to rocket to the upside 0.71. Momentum bullish, RSI super bullish, super aggressive, overbought conditions, price discovery, everything continues there. New all-time highs, everything. And then looking at discretionaries, down candle in this consolidation. The price target, if it could hold this zone, would be 189.38. But everything within this chart just looks awful amazon looks awful tesla looks awful got a little bit of a double top at the highly traded zone there of course anything is possible if it breaks the zone and pushes maybe we see a push back up to that 193.81 area but if it doesn't this is probably headed back down to that 200 sma somewhere in between that 178 and 180 area momentum step back to bearish here rsi looking to retest that sma moving over to oil and gas and financials both of these pretty positive on the day 0.68 and 0.32 Oil and gas got some news out of Libya that oil production was going to be cut a little bit. So that got a really strong pop. Might pull back a little bit. I would expect it to hold and push. I had a bullish thesis going into this anyway, so looks okay. And then looking at financials, gapped up and doji. That's a little bit concerning at all-time highs. If you get a gap down, island reversal, that would be very concerning. You can also see clear divergence here, much higher prices, much lower RSI from these previous reads. So that is concerning as well. Everything is still bullish, but something to watch for 
on financials as we head into the rest of the week. Moving over to 20 and 50 day breadth, 20 still hovering right at those really high levels. High of day was all the way up at 92.04. You don't see that very often. Remember, we've been talking about this being a super critical level, very, very high, all the way as high as the November of 23 levels. And then before that, you have to go all the way back to June of 23. All of those were peak levels before we saw major downturns. So again, be very cautious. Let's go ahead and extend out that trend line. Didn't think we'd touch that one again, but getting pretty close to it here. We'll see if we touch that before we break down. Very high levels, like I mentioned, probably going to reject from here in the next day or two. And then looking at the 50-day breadth, this obviously has a different thesis. We did get back to these previous highs. Couldn't touch the 83.83 level, broke back below 77.46. We'll see what happens after this. This is technically a higher high from this previous high, as well as this high here. In terms of structure, hard to say exactly what that looks like. Have pretty consistently higher lows here, and now we're rallying up. So 50-day breadth showing overall a decent structure with higher lows and higher highs, but 20-day breadth is showing a short-term top at a minimum. Moving over to the dollar here, you can see we did wick a new low early in the session and then rallied up here during the session. This has been a monumental down move. We've been talking about it very consistently. In terms of trend support, it's all the way down at that 99.90 area, but we did catch a little bit of a bounce. Maybe we see just a little bit of a relief rally. We have super low levels here. You can see RSI, you do have a little bit of divergence. Interesting. So the RSI low from the 21st was down at 25.21, and then RSI low back from Friday session was 26.27. So you have a lower price with a higher RSI read. Maybe you get a little bit of follow through on that after being super super oversold. And if this dollar starts to pick up even a little bit of strength, I think equities are going to crater here very quickly. So something to watch the dollar, maybe finding a short term bottom. I don't think this overall structure is going to bottom off of this move, but understand just how oversold it is. And that gives you a lot of room even for just a relief rally. Moving over to bonds, we did get a new intraday high on JNK relative to that high on Friday, but then we gave it all back down 0.81. We were definitely over bought we thought we might see a little bit of a pullback the question is how much of a pullback would like to see 9651 hold if it's going to stay bullish if this breaks down there's a lot of room down to that 21 ema so want to see it hold pretty quickly and then looking at tlt fell a little bit here today a little bit concerning now so you got a high slightly lower high couldn't get back to that on this most recent rally seems like we're fading on momentum you can see just one more step down this is probably going to go into bearish momentum tomorrow rsi looking a little bit weak weaker here. So probably going to roll a little bit. I still think this bullish structure is going to hold, but short term, next couple days, maybe even a week, you see a little bit of bearishness here. Touch some of these trend lines, 96.50 in here maybe, or this trend down here around 95.5. Hard to say exactly, but seems like we've short term topped on TLT. Moving over to the VIX, doji candle, 1.83%. Momentum continues to roll to bullish. Basically the inverse there, got the SMA, held a higher low, probably going to retest that over the next day or two and then we'll see what happens. Still showing signs of life. Still think this is going to push into that 20 area. I've been pretty bearish on markets over the last couple of weeks, and I still think this is going to follow through on the VIX. Moving over to my accounts, I made just a little bit of money on the day, which you like to see, considering that the Russell was flat and the NASDAQ was down over right around 1%. So everything's good here today. Russell made money, as you would expect. And then Qs, I traded in and out of a couple of different positions, making money on those. And then I still have these long dated calls at 475. Four, so still making money there. And then you can see I did hold one call into tomorrow's session at 478, 472 cents. After hours, we continue to fall in here just below 474. So that should be in good shape, looking for about $140 profit there. Still have that super long dated call out at 492 for $7 credit on each of those. So that would be $1,400 profit if we did get a max profit on that. So overall, very well protected, slightly bearish on the deltas going into tomorrow's session on the queues and basically flat still here on the Russell. Let me know down in the comments section what you think of the charts. Are we going to be able to find a base at that 21 EMA or is this going to turn into a medium term downtrend? Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.